may be seated. Well, good morning. How's everybody doing today? I got to experience last night with about 60, probably plus of you, Tim Hawkins. Anybody ever heard of Tim Hawkins? Yeah, four of us in here have heard of him. <laughs> He's a Christian comedian. Uh, what's amazing is we had probably an hour and a half, I'm guessing, of good, clean fun last night. And I laughed until I hurt. In fact, even when we got home, I was trying to recite some of these jokes to my wife, and she, she didn't think I was as funny as he was. But we just had a good time. And you know what? It was just another good reminder. It's just another good reminder that, you know what? We can be followers of Jesus Christ and have an absolute blast doing it. Now, I know sometimes in the Church of the Nazarene, which I've grown up in and I love, we feel like when we get saved and sanctified, a little bit petrified, that we have to be stoic. But I believe this. I believe that Jesus wants us to laugh and have joy and just have an absolute great time serving Him. Now listen, in this world you will have trouble. We've experienced that, haven't we? Some of us are even experiencing it right now. But Jesus says, hey, listen, take heart. I have overcome this world. And because of that, you guys, I'm not going to let anybody, any situation, steal my joy that I have in Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I'm going to walk through this life having a good old time Amen. serving Jesus. We're in a series called My Playlist. Um, I thought it was just going to be two months, but we just have kept it going. Um, we got a great fall planned for all of you. Starting September 15th, we're going to be starting a new series called Go Fish. And we're going to have a good time and we're going to be reminded of what God's Word says about calling us to be fishers of people. And so starting September, we're going to do that. But today, this is going to break some of your heart. You don't get to listen to me today in my playlist. No applause, please. But I'm going to have one of my friends come up, and he's going to share with you his playlist. Here's what I love about our church. Wasn't it fun to see the baptisms last week? Amen. I tell you what, Jesus was all over this place last week. Um, and he didn't stay here. Do you know that? He went outside of this building. And those who were baptized, man, I'm telling you, God is doing some neat things in their lives. And, and I was pretty fired up. What I love about our church is we're full of real people with real issues, with real families, with real ups and downs, but we serve a real Jesus. And all across this congregation this morning are stories of how Jesus Christ has gotten a hold of people, and all of us have different stories, different backgrounds, different walks of life. And today, uh, one of my friends is going to come up and just share with you what is on his playlist. And this man, I meet with him almost every Tuesday at Pizza Hut. <laughs> and what I love about this guy is he is the real deal. He loves Jesus. He loves people. I always feel like when I leave Pizza Hut, not only do I have a full belly, but I've got a full heart. Uh, he challenges me. He stretches me. He's just become a good friend of mine. And uh, when I asked him to share with you, he, uh, he said, yeah, how long do I get? <laughs> I said, well, hey, if it's about an hour and a half, just start to wrap it up. <laughs> but I want to introduce somebody that many of you know, some of you might not know. But this man is full of Jesus, and he's going to share with you. So I'd like us to welcome Doug Broom.
a similar report. Good morning. Uh, I brought along my note card, my lovely wife, Janet. Um, I didn't realize uh, how hard it would be to put it together when I realized, uh, started looking and realized I couldn't read notes anymore. Um, <clears throat> so as Pastor Mike said this morning, I'm just going to let uh, the Spirit move me and wherever that goes, Janet's going to direct me. So um, you want to start with the first verse, please? Romans 9.20, but who indeed are you, a mere human being, to talk back to God? Does what is molded say to the molder, why have you made me like this? Yeah, in my life, I, uh, I always needed to know why. And when I finally read this passage, I realized I had been talking back to God all my life. And not in a way where we were having a friendly conversation, but in a way where... I needed to prove whatever God did for me, good or ill. I needed to make it happen my way, and he needed my stamp before anything could happen in my life. And if it didn't go the way I wanted it to go, I chose my own way and told God he was wrong. And uh, it's just this conflict of wrestling uh, with who's created you and uh, trying to say, you can't do this to me. The blindness uh, came along slowly, and, you know, I'm going, why, why? Why did this happen to me? If you're God, why did you do this to me? I didn't deserve this, even though in retrospect I probably did, but that's somewhat irrelevant because, uh, you know, God, God is God, and I can't argue with God about those things. God created me. So I had a a long wrestling match with him about those, those issues. And this whole moth and flame thing, you know, where you believe God exists, but if it's not exactly how you want it, well, well, you know, okay, I'll, I'll skirt by this side and, and go somewhere else for a little bit, and then something happens, and you come back to God and say, thank you, God, or, or God forgive me, or God help me. But never making that final choice, as Pastor Mike always says, either you're all in or you're all out in those situations and uh, that became tough so I kind of I got to the point where the blindness came and it was like you know this has to be resolved one way or the other you know I have got to come to terms with God so I had about a two-year conversation with God where just every day was going through every event in my life what had happened um, both for good and ill I mean I went to places I shouldn't have gone and somehow God just kept coming back to me and putting himself right in my face where there was no choice but to confront that situation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. The next verse is Psalm 139, 16. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was written in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. In Romans 8, 28, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So when I came across these verses, these are verses, especially the Romans 8, 28, I'm sure we've all thumbed through many times in our mind. And I, and I finally determined I needed to understand these verses for what they really meant. You know, if God's the guy who molded me and created me, that I'm not in charge, but he is, then what's the outcome? Because, look, I'm going blind. I've got things that have gone wrong, and I don't like any of these things right now. And then it, it just struck me, these things are for good. You know, we're going to, as um, the pastor said a couple weeks ago, you know, we're going to have the storms. But these things can all be turned around for good. And I finally started to take ownership of these things, and I started to realize that, um, you know, it was a competition of wills, and I needed to bring my will in harmony with what God's will was. Because if God's will is good, as it says here, if God knew me and made me this um, unique creation, an unrepeated miracle, then I needed to figure out how to bring my will in line with the person who created me. 
so we have the load on there. Okay, that's good. Right. Yeah, my brother was still struggling with it. Okay, okay. So, you know, it's coming down to God is God, and I'm not. And, and giving up that part of my life where I had to put the stamp of approval on everything. And uh, really understanding uh, submission. But submission in a way um, that brings joy. Because, you know, we all have pride. And this pride that we have inside of us wants us to accomplish something important. To, to be noticed. Uh, to... Uh, do great things, and you can stand back and say, yeah, I did that. And it was learning to give that up, that it, it's, it's God that's doing it through me and not me doing it for God or me doing it for my own glory. There was one more note on that, though. Right, so then, there, you know, so then you reflect back on what you've done in your life. And uh, believe me, there was a lot of failures. Um, and many of them that, you know, I still pay consequences for in one way, shape, or form. It, it was really hard to forgive myself. Because um, when you read the word, you realize how much you failed. And if you read that law without balancing it with the gospel, it kind of throws you in a state of despair. Of, you know, look at all these things I've done, and I really need to be remorseful, and I need, you know, I need to... I need to be punished now. I, it's just all these horrible things. And then when you start really reading the Bible and you read about David and uh, you read about Paul and other people in the Bible, you realize there's really nothing too horrible that God can't get past for you. You know, you can get out of it. You can walk away from it because it's all his and God's mercy because God made me, God owns me, and uh, God's got good in mind for me. Okay, let's go to the last one. Okay. Yeah. Matthew 7, 9 through 11. Which of you, if, our, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So think about that. In the depths of what that means... Um, God has our best interests in mind, my best interests in mind. You know, a lot of us, when we're growing up, we, you know, we see our Father is giving us the good gifts, I hope, and then, you know, here's the Heavenly Father. You know, right here, Christ is saying, you know, if your Father and those people around you can give you good gifts, how much more will your Father in Heaven give you? And it was, it was owning that meaning of, hey, God has my best interests in mind. It's no longer my responsibility to make things happen the way I want. You know, all the things that uh, we try and put in our minds of things we need to be happy, uh, how things should go to be happy, you know, free from everything, and, uh, you know, free from the blindness. Oh, if I was going to be happy, God would make me see. I'm, I'm not too sure about that, you know, because it's... Uh, I'm just, I just want to go along for the ride on that. But I still had to figure out how to forgive myself and, uh, and stop rejecting God's mercy because in a way, you know, if we, if we dwell in what we have done wrong, if we let those things that we have failed at be the things that define us, we do not see the glory of Christ. We do not allow God to have mercy on us if we dwell in those. And... Uh, I was determined because I needed to resolve this thing. So uh, I got on my bicycle. Yeah, blind guy on a bicycle. <laughs> Grabbed a notebook and a pen and rode out to Forbes Lake, which that's about 20 miles from here. Somehow found my way out there and wrote everything I did wrong on a piece of paper. Started a fire, read each as best I could, threw it in the fire and asked God to take it away. And just went through uh, each one at a time and just uh, using a symbolic way, found a way to let go of all those things, that they were no longer mine, they were Christ. <clears throat> and what that did was allow me 
the freedom to live, as Pastor Mike was saying early, the, I, am, I am free from sin. I can live a life free from sin. These things are no longer my responsibility. I don't have to make results occur for me or how I think those results should go. All I need to do is love God and follow what God says in his word. And there's a lot of stuff in there and a lot of things to read that we can find, find through Christ to give, those, uh, give up our control and just let God. And it, and it really is incredibly freeing. I, it, um, it allows me to experience things. You know, with the blindness and sometimes just going out there is a little bit unnerving. I've been uh, hit by a van in St. Louis, just minding my own business, walking along, and and uh, close calls, and 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 all these things that would make me stay at home and not really want to challenge what's out there. And then, you know, you finally realize when you're sitting in that chair that look, I'm dying a little bit each day just sitting here, or I'm going to get out there and go out with my boots on. So um, I work every day manual labor, uh, uh, sometimes dangerous stuff, just ask Mike. Almost took him down uh, Tuesday. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's getting out there, being with people, doing something, um, going through those open doors when they're open. And, and trust me, I like open doors because the closed ones kind of bother my nose. <laughs> I know I got a stick to use, but sometimes I miss. So, um, but you know, being aware of what those open doors are, and, and actively looking for the open doors, taking that opportunity, seizing it, because I can guarantee you, God will bring things across your path, and it is up to us to pay attention to what those things are, because you know God has created us. He has created us for a good purpose. He is going to turn these things around for us. He is going to give us good gifts, and all he asks is that we love his other creatures. Because not only are we as individuals created as unrepeated, unique creations of God, but so are those people around us. And, and, and expressing God's mercy to those people around us. Because, you know, uh, I know from my previous path of not following God, I realize more than ever, you know, there but by the grace of God go I. And I need to extend God's mercy as God has extended his mercy to me. And forgiveness is a really big part of that. So now I see the world as a place of joy. I don't want to see the, see the uh, pain and sorrow, the challenges. You know, it, the storms are going to come, but it is my perspective that had to change. And God's creation is good. You know, there is sin in the world, and that's the way it is, but God is God and God has created us and God has created something good and joyful for us to experience. Is there anything more? Okay. I think I covered everything. <laughs> if I missed something, let me know. Doug, I want you to know they never stand up for me after I preach. <laughs> what I love about Doug is physically he can't see. Uh, Doug, I wish you knew how good looking I was. But you know what? That guy sees. And it's a good reminder to all of us as we serve a God who loves us, a God who cares about us, and regardless of what comes in our path, we got a Savior who is absolutely 100% crazy about us. And He's got plans for us. You know, going out to Pizza Hut with Doug, you know, <laughs> there's a waitress that when we show up, she knows exactly what we all drink. She 
tells the kitchen to make Doug's favorite kind of pizza. And it's because he lets that light shine everywhere he goes. We're going to take communion here in a second if our ushers would come up. If you're new with us today, some of you might have some questions about our communion. Um, You do not have to be a member of this church. You don't have to be a Nazarene. Uh, If you're just visiting with us today, you're going to be able to participate in our communion. Uh, I guess get asked all the time, can my children take communion? And I am convinced of this. Jesus had a special place in his heart for children. And my children can tell you in detail the sacrifice that Christ paid for us because they have taken communion with their mom. And she uses those moments as a teaching moment to teach our children what Jesus has done for us. And so as we take communion, what Scripture commands us to do is just take a few moments to examine ourselves. Allow the Holy Spirit to point out things in our lives that we need to change, that we need to shift. Maybe it's some things that Doug said today that that the Holy Spirit just used those words to, to point out some things in your life. Maybe some of you today are are living in sin. You're not bad people. You just got sin in your life. Today would be a great day to say yes to Jesus who paid this incredible price for the forgiveness of your sins. Maybe some of you just need to sit and examine yourselves for a few moments. And then the elements are going to be handed out. And if you just hold those, we're going to take those all together as soon as everybody has those. But during those times as you're holding those, I want to remind you that we serve a God who loves you so much that He sent His one and only Son to be the ultimate sacrifice for your sin and for my sin so that you and I could have life. (laughs) Like Doug talked about, we don't have to sit on the lazy boy chair and wallow in our sin and shame, but The price has been paid for us. Jesus Christ went to the cross for us. The gift has already been laid out in front of us. All we have to do is receive it. Maybe some of us today just need to say yes to Him. So as the elements are being handed out, just go ahead and hold on to those. And let's allow the Holy Spirit just to do that deep soul check. Father, we just thank You for Your love for us. Greater love has no man than this, that he would lay his life down for his friends. You've done that for us, Jesus, and we give you praise for that. And as we come to the table of communion today, we want to remember the sacrifice that you paid for us. But we want it to be more than just a head knowledge. God, as we examine ourselves, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just move through this place and that each of us would respond the way you'd want us to. In Jesus' name.